Hello there and welcome to my beginner's guide for Shattered Pixel Dungeon. I'm Icon and in this video I'm going to talk about everything you need to know to enjoy this game. As usual, there are timestamps in the description box, so if you're looking for a particular topic, go check it out, you'll most likely find your answers there. The first thing that I want to summarize here is what's the gameplay all about. This is a classic roguelike, which means there's no meta progression, you will always be as strong as the first time when you enter this game. There are no unlocks to make your character stronger or anything. It's just the procedural generated dungeon, procedural generated monsters and items, and a randomized challenge whether you survive it or not. The game's full with different options to go. You have lots of different strategic options. There's consumables which help you out, weapons, and lots of different things paired with quite unique mechanics that I haven't seen in roguelike and other roguelikes so often. That all makes this game to a pretty cool thing. I love turn-based combat, I love roguelikes, and I love this game as well. So the user interface quickly explained. In the lower corner here we have our character. Here's the icon, the red bar is his health points, when this goes to zero you're dead. Below there you have your experience points. Once this bar is full you get another level which you can spend for talent points. Talent points are found here in this little tree there. When you click them you see a little bit of a description. Whenever you level up you gain one point and these talents are unique to the four playable classes that you can have, that you have access in the game. One stat that wasn't mentioned yet is strength but more about that later. Over here we have our inventory. Our inventory is divided in our backpack and other pouches. The backpack contains food, throwables and your water skin. Here's your directly equipped gear, weapon, armor, and other stuff, and over here is your quick bar. These are, well, it doesn't show, but this is number one, two, three, and, uh, and so on on your keyboard. So if you want to use them, you can access them quickly via pressing these keys on your keyboard. And what's left to explain is up there you have access to the encyclopedia, and you also see which level you're on, also the options of the game. Worth mentioning here, if you are confused by the key bindings, you can find them there. And also there's, everything here is customizable. So if you don't like something, some key bindings, some setting, just customize it. The game in its default settings is configured to be ideally played with mouse and keyboard together, but you can just adapt that to your own liking. Now, I don't want to say much more about the user interface because the most important things are here explained. Now, how to play this game. Movement ideally done with the num block, so make sure the num block uh, key is lit and you can just use it as a compass needle. So I like that because it enables diagonal movement and diagonal movement is really, really important in games like these. You explore the dungeon by walking around and you should really take care about your environment. Sometimes there's traps and such, so you should take care where you step. If you see something that you don't know what to, what's supposed to be, you can click the magnifying glass here and click the thing on the screen. Everything in the game has explanations. If you want it quicker, press E on the keyboard and then click where you want to look. So regarding examining enemies and traps and such, it's always worth taking a look on your enemy before whacking him because you can get really vital information out of that. Killing enemies is quite simple if you want to go for close combat, just move into them and you deal damage. Well, most likely. You'll take a swing and you can also miss. Beyond that, you can of course also use other items, but more about that in a sec. Picking up items is done automatically when you walk over them, or you can just press C when you are on top of them. This happens when you are when you see enemies, then the game doesn't pick up things automatically. And you can also click the icon here. If, if something is below you on your on the ground, you will have icons about it where roughly where my cursor is at. So exploring the dungeon is a, is a vital part of the gameplay, and as you see here. There's also locked doors. I have to find a key before I can find these. There's also patches of grass. These sometimes contain dew drops which can heal you. And this is a pretty important thing to know. Because these dew drops, here's one, are basically 
health, potion, health potions um, to be used later on. So, one other thing that I need to mention is this game has a hunger clock. So after a while, you will grow hungry. Your health regeneration will drop, and after a while further, you will starve, and then your health regeneration goes into negative. So you should only eat when you start to be starving, and even consider waiting a little bit uh, over, longer over that, because food in this game is quite scarce. So, last thing about the gameplay before we go into another topic, I want to talk about how to utilize uh, these, these situations like that. The lower rat is sleeping right now, which means it's totally unaware of my character. You can use ranged items, so throwing stone, you either click them, and then you click the enemy, or you press 1, and then you click the enemy again. Or, if you want to go for a uh, complete uh, keyboard-bound control, you can customize that in the settings, like I mentioned. So, these are roughly the basics about the movement, the combat. I want to talk a little bit about, your, about the other topics in more detail, because, you know, consumables and the equipment and such are all things that are a little bit more complicated. One last thing is uh, is to be mentioned. You will always be searching for a down staircase because that's the next level. And once you found that, you can always go downstairs and upstairs. So if you have to run away from a very difficult fight or you run low on HP because you misplayed a situation somewhat, there's always the option to go back upstairs and rest up a bit. Just keep in mind, resting does take time does eat up your food and at some point you'll starve beyond any recognition now that's the basic gameplay and let's talk about other things let's talk about gear next so gear you see this is the whole line here the the, the light gray one where the sword and the shirts add you have these slots in the game and the gear is always defined by its tier and its uh, requirements more like if you meet these requirements or not. As you see here, the sword deals 1 to 10 points of damage and requires 10 strength. Luckily, my character has 10 strength. To increase your strength, you need to run across a potion of strength, or there are a couple of lucky other coincidences, but 90 per, most of the time you will, find, you will increase your strength via strength potions, as far as I know. Feel free to leave a comment if you, find, if you know about better methods. And, as you see here, this weapon is a tier 2 weapon which requires 12 strength. Probably this weapon is too heavy for you. And it is purple, uh, it has this purple overlay which means it is unidentified. Be very, very careful with unidentified gear. Unidentified gear is more often than not cursed and has really bad stats linked to it. And you won't get rid of that item without a scroll of remove curse or in or, or comparable effects so i strongly re recommend you not to equip unidentified items but it's up to you especially when the run is on level one and you are just curious whether or not you found something great go for it here in this scenario we found a scroll of identify we use it and now we see it's a wayward short sword and which means it has a curse. It has a very hard time finding its mark, making it extremely inaccurate, and there you see, it's already crappy. You can, though, keep those items, because maybe you find later on in a decurse scroll, and then this item will be useful again. Beyond that, there there's not that much more to say about gear. Just read those tooltips and use these items accordingly. There are really tons of different items in the game, and I really wanted to point out the fact that you need a certain amount of strength usually, and be wary about cursed items. Next on the list are consumables. Consumables are for me all these items that like the water skin here, or these scrolls, or we found one seed of sun grass here, so you can throw that to create a plant which has healing properties, and all these items. Shattered Pixel Dungeon features a ton of different consumables, and using them to your own advantage is extremely important to, to be successful on this game, because otherwise, combat with enemies is often way too hard to 
to go for it. So the smart usage of your consumables is very, very important. And as a rule of thumb, before you die with an inventory full of unused items, rather use them and waste them, because there's nothing worse than dying with a set of useful consumables in your pocket. Also, many of the consumables in this game are rather quirky or strange or need some thinking around out of the box to make them really useful. So I can't stress it out enough to just experiment and play around with these because they're just... It's just a lot to discover, and the more you play around with it, the more feeling you get about when you wasted something, when you used something intelligently. But the worst thing you could do is not use your consumables at all. For example, scrolls are something that really are extremely useful for identifying things, and, well, the problem with consumables is as long as you haven't identified them, they can be a double-edged sword, and... It comes down to your own playstyle, how to play around with that. I can't really add much more into that. This could be actually the topic for an entire guide, so I'm just moving on to the next topic here, which is progression and how to get better at this game and how to make your character stronger. Of course, the most obvious way are level ups. As soon as you level up, you gain another talent point, you gain a couple of HP, and you also gain some extra stats there. I sadly can't scroll up in the text box there, but you gain a couple of base stats, if I remember correctly. Accuracy and Evasion get higher when you level up. Also, these talents here. Pick them accordingly to your playstyle or to your situation. So here, whenever we identify an item, I get healing, my maximum shield amount can be higher. There's lots of different things. Choose them to your own liking. Beyond that, progression in this game works mostly by learning. It's a lot about learning how dangerous is this enemy, how bad is the situation, what can I do with this consumable. With this consumable, all of a sudden, situation X is not dangerous anymore. And like many classic roguelikes, this game is also very good at teaching you the basics quickly by make, giving you a very easy to pick up game, but giving you a very hard time mastering it. So don't worry about dying repeatedly, about failing horribly, about touching stuff which immediately kills you. It's all part of the learning experience and as a matter of fact, it is quite fun. Now, that's practically all you need to know to go forth and kill yourself in this game. I don't mind. I don't mean that in a negative way. Seriously, go down there, get killed, learn from it, come back stronger. It's a fun gameplay loop and I love it. But beyond that, there is, of course, the last topic for this video, some general tips and tricks regarding roguelikes, because, you know, I played these games for a pretty long time, and as some of you might already know, I already did a lot of guides about roguelikes, and I basically played these since I'm a teenager. So, here's a couple of things from a veteran. First off, I want to talk about identifying scrolls. It's never bad to identify scrolls directly, because most scrolls don't really have super detrimental effects. But as you saw here, I popped a scroll which teleported me around. If you want to identify unknown scrolls, the ideal way of doing it is picking them up and going upstairs with them. So you can just... Give me a sec, I need to run away here. So you can just be in safety there. There. When, when something really bad happens, you can't just go somewhere, uh, you got just get, gonna get teleported somewhere undangerous. That's a really cool thing to go for, and this sev saved me several times in my life. Beyond that, as you saw there, whenever you run across a fight which is more than you can take, it's... you don't need to fight it directly, you can just run away for a second, and that's nothing to be ashamed of. Most of the time, deaths occur because you take a fight that you're not ready for. So, if you feel like something is more than you can stomach, or the situation is really bad in general, just run upstairs, rest up, recover your, um, your strength, think about the items you got, think about the situation that just smacked you, and whether or not you have an option to defuse that. Beyond that, 
Identifying potions. Well, I'm a big fan of identifying potions with scrolls because most of the time potions have really strong effects and therefore I find it better to ID them directly by scrolls. But of course, since as you see here, strength potions are a thing and you need to increase your strength, you might as well just drink them. But it's really a double-edged sword and I, I can only say be careful with IDing pots like that. Now, I want to talk about food a little bit. Food is a very, very scarce resource in this game, and we can we don't have that as much food as we want to. So, by the way, I just poisoned the entire room by popping that potion. Not cool. So, that means, in case your character is a little bit battered up, it's not necessarily a smart choice to just stand still and rest up. More often than not, you most likely want to keep exploring rather than just resting because food is so freaking scarce in this game. Another thing that I want to talk about is when you fight against several enemies, try to find choke points like these where only one enemy can close in at you at a time. Everything else makes the game a lot harder because, you know, if enemies are able to swarm you from multiple angles, things get a lot more dangerous and therefore choke points like these are your best friend. And as you see here when handling dangerous enemies, I was extremely low and unable to deal with that rat and I managed to just lose it by running around here and waiting it out and now I'm resting up back to full HP. Whenever a situation is really bad, running away and dancing around obstacles and such can give you the opportunity to get back on your feet. One more thing, use those ranged weapons when there are dangerous enemies up ahead of you. They are super strong comparatively, and it's, in my opinion, really a lost opportunity not to use them. And beyond that, well, the last tip I want to give to you is try and find a character class that you find easy to play. There's four classes in total, and therefore choose the one you feel like feels easy for you and play the hell out of it. Because this game is really hard and getting good at it will take some time. Therefore, you might as well go with a class that you like to play. And don't play anything where you feel like, man, this is somehow weird or I don't get the grip of it. Just try it out and find out what's good and likable for you. And beyond that, well, there's only one last thing that I want to mention. Here, there's surprise attacks. Whenever you see those Zs on the enemy, that means they're sleeping and unable to dodge. Give them a whack with your ranged weapons because they can't really dodge that. Also, this way you unlock a character class if you do that more often, if you do that often enough. So, that's been all I wanted to say about this game. I hope you found this video helpful and I hope you will be enjoying some dungeon crawling because this game is really worth your retention if you like classic roguelikes. It's deep, it has a ton of different cool features, items and ideas and it keeps bashing my skull in on the first three levels even though, like I said, I play this stuff since I'm a teenager. So really good stuff, feels fair, feels good, has a good challenge, wholeheartedly recommended. So, I hope you found that enjoyable. Feel free to drop me a comment if you have some questions or if you might want to add something in there. I'd be delighted to hear from you. And beyond that, leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed. And of course, consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. There's daily content coming up from my side. All you need to do is to hit that notification bell and you'll stay informed. And last but not least, there are also not only timestamps in the description box, but my Twitch channel. I do streams quite regularly, so I'd love to see you guys there. Have a good one, and see you soon.